We all want to be confident. We want to live a life of purpose. We want to pursue our goals and we want to have great relationships. But something that sometimes gets in the way is our communication style. Your communication style, along with overthinking, procrastination, lack of direction, they all fuse together and bring about anxiety and stress. But the good news is we don't need to live that way. Hi, my name is Jeff Bruce and welcome to The Jeff Bruce. And I am a passive overthinker in recovery and I wanna help you live the fullest possible life. So every human being has and develops a communication style. It feels more like a personality style, but nevertheless, it's called a communication style. Our goal today is just simply to go through the four communication styles so that you can determine which one you fall into most often, and if necessary, you can make the changes in your life. In future videos, I'll share with you how I made those changes, and you can too. So the four communication styles are passive, passive-aggressive, aggressive, and assertive. You probably heard these words before, but you may not have given much thought to which one describes you. You also probably aren't just exclusively one communication style. Sometimes the way we communicate with our spouse or our friends might be different than how we communicate with other people that we work with. All right, let's get to them. The first one is the passive communication style. And this is the person who is non-confrontational. They don't wanna cause conflict. They want everybody to kind of be okay and get along. Often this person will kind of allow others to make choices for them. They often kind of ignore their own personal rights and they really don't often express their feelings or their opinions. Now, not all the time, but I think this person is more often than not gonna be an introvert or be viewed as an introvert. You know, they probably won't give any of their opinions until everybody else has, and they feel like it's safe for them to give their, their perspective or their viewpoint. This person is probably an overthinker as well, or at least they're developing into an overthinker because they're so conscious of what other people's opinions are around them, and especially what other people's opinions are of them. So basically the passive person gives control of themselves to other people, even when they really don't want to. Now, one of the benefits of being passive is if things get out of control, if there's some violent or aggressive behavior, the passive person who wants to avoid confrontation may be the right person to sort of intercede and help bring calm to a situation. Other than that, it's really not a place that we want to be very often. Number two is passive aggressive. The passive aggressive person appears passive on the outside, but internally and really with their intentions, they're aggressive. I think the passive aggressive person really has been somebody that was passive and the resentment and the anger has sort of built up in them, but they still kind of want to avoid confrontation or at least make it seem like they don't want confrontation. So they do things in this subtly aggressive way. Oh, I'm so sorry I spilled my coffee all over you. Please forgive me, totally my fault. This person may sometimes kind of sabotage other people's efforts. They give people the silent treatment. Yeah, no, it's fine, I'm good. They may tend to talk about others behind their back being a gossip. One of the most frustrating things about the passive aggressive person is the way they can cause frustration. What I mean is if they're called out on one of their behaviors, what they tend to do is just make an excuse or put it back on you. Oh man, I'm sorry you feel that way. It's not what I intended at all. When really it is exactly what they intended. They want to cause frustration, but they want to hide behind this kind of veil or cloud of passivity. Sometimes what happens with a passive or a passive aggressive person is ultimately they become aggressive. They're kind of bottling up this, this anger, resentment, or bitterness inside that eventually comes out in aggression. So that's our third communication style, the aggressive communication style. So aggressive can certainly be physical aggression where somebody is abusing somebody in a relationship, but aggressive is not always physical. Oftentimes it's not even somebody that raises their voice, but they use threats and fear and intimidation to get their way. A while ago, I worked in a real toxic environment, and the reason why was because the supervisor was aggressive in their behavior. I'd never seen so many people get fired or quit before, and it was all because of a person that wanted to exert their power and their authority. Now, the thing with the aggressive person is they can get their way for a while. Usually, it will catch up to them at some point. In the short term, being aggressive may seem like a good way to reach your goals, but in the long term, it's just an ineffective way. It seems that more often than not, an aggressive person person is somebody that has been given a degree of authority and power. And so they exert that to make sure people know that they're in charge. Now with all these three, sometimes there's different things in the environment or upbringing that causes us to, to be one of these communication styles. 
the passive or passive aggressive person may have just kind of been traumatized or maybe they were just embarrassed one too many times. Maybe they've been dealing with an aggressive person and they've just been crushed to the point of no self-confidence and passivity. Or it could even just be that their environment growing up was very strict and perfection was expected of them. Whereas the aggressive person may have just grown up with somebody else who's aggressive. That's their only role model in life. Somebody can be aggressive just from low self-esteem as well. Now with the aggressive communication style, there's actually a place where it's necessary. I think today men, especially Christian men, tend to be more on the passive side. Very nice and non-confrontational because sort of the image that is pushed is, well, that's the way a good Christian is. They don't cause any conflict. They don't want to ruffle any feathers, you know, and so they're just Christian nice guys. But sometimes the world needs men to step up and be aggressive, to stand up for the weak, and to stand up for those that are being threatened. Sometimes being passive in situations like that can do more harm than good. And then the fourth communication style is the assertive communication style. And this is really where we want to be most of the time. This is a person that has developed self-confidence. They are direct and they're honest in the way they communicate, but they're still respectful of other people. They're not just kind of spewing out everything that comes into their mind. I think sometimes an assertive person can be misunderstood as an aggressive person because they use these very firm statements like, I need you to do this or what I prefer is this. And so they're very direct and sometimes that comes across as aggressive, but really it's not. They're not threatening anybody. They're not disrespecting anybody's wishes. They're just being firm in, in their beliefs. An assertive person is in charge of their behavior and their emotions and they'll decide what they will and will not do. It's not a way of just getting your way. It's a way of just being firm and strong in your beliefs. Again, an assertive person is respectful of others. They listen to other people's wishes and wants and desires, and then they determine whether or not they need to state or restate theirs or not. Now there's one downside to the assertive communication style, and that is if you're dealing with somebody who is overly aggressive. The assertive person may actually not be able to calm the situation. They may need to either get a passive person or shift into a passive communication style to calm the situation and be non-confrontational. Now, in my own experience, I was put into a leadership position and I was still a very passive person. And so I would tell my staff, for example, hey, would you please consider the possibility of maybe doing this? And they're kind of left with, does he want me to do it or not do it? Is it just my opinion? It's very unclear when you're a leader and you're communicating passively. And so as an assertive leader, I can be a lot more clear and just say, hey, listen, I need you to do this by Friday at five. And then the person is left with clear instructions of what's expected. There's no threats and there's no disrespect. It's just clear communication with others. So I wanna give you guys a resource if you're really interested in making the change from passive or from one of the communication styles to being more assertive. It's called The Assertiveness Workbook by Dr. Randy Patterson. I'll link this in the description. If you go to my website and purchase it there, I get a little kickback without any additional expense to you, so please consider that. But it really is a great book and it is a workbook. It's not just something to read, it actually has action steps for you to take. So the good thing about communication styles is you can make changes from passive or passive aggressive, aggressive, and you can go to the assertive communication style. Just like anything else, it takes some work and discipline, but you can get there. And honestly, I really do believe if you wanna live a life of purpose and live the fullest possible life, this is where you need to be. I think too, as Christians, we need to look at Jesus and the way he communicated with the disciples and those he interacted with. Jesus was assertive in the way he communicated with others. In some upcoming videos, I'll share with you a little bit of my story of going from passive to assertive and just give you some additional resources to help you get there. If you have any questions or comments about communication styles or overthinking, being more productive or finding purpose in your life, let me know in the comments below and I will respond to those. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I'll see you next time.